So this video is our story about how we came up with a program to have QI training for GP trainees and GP training in Northern Ireland. It's called the Equip Program. So before I came to work in healthcare, uh, I actually worked uh, in the IT industry. I worked for a large multinational company um, which had a safety focus. And in that organisation, I learned all about continuous improvement. And then I changed track completely and uh, trained to be a doctor. And I came to work in the NHS. And I actually was really surprised that that kind of culture and ethos didn't seem to exist in healthcare. And then in 2013, Don Berwick uh, published a report and in that it said that the NHS has to become a learning organisation. And at that point, I realised that what I had known as continuous improvement had come to uh, healthcare and was going to grow in the NHS. And that's whenever I saw that quality improvement was going to be the way forward for us. So when we started on this journey, we realised that there wasn't lots of knowledge about how to approach quality improvement in primary care. We had trainees who were spread all over um, the country and we had to find some way of bringing them together and learning together. For that, we uh, adopted the uh, ECHO platform. ECHO is uh, a way of bringing the age-old way of case-based learning together with the new technologies of webcams and bring those together to form a community of practice uh, where people can learn from each other through the presentation of their cases. Um, we are intending for our, our trainees to gain some of the knowledge, some of the skills, some of the language, but to get some experience in quality improvement. Um, and we do that by sharing the projects uh, on our ECHO and we have one-to-one -one, uh, mentorship. Um, and so the, the intention is that by the end of the program, our trainees will leave uh, endowed with the skills that will be the platform for them to be leaders uh, using quality improvement uh, in the next generation. So the essential ingredients that make Equip work uh, are that we have trainees who are selecting a, a project, a piece of improvement work in their practice which is meaningful to them and their practice. That's number one. Uh, secondly, that they are supported within that community of practice, but also that they have some direct teaching on some of the tools and also one-to-one -one, uh, mentorship. And then finally, we're using the echo to actually learn from one another. How did the Echo work? Essentially, we have a hub where we have a, a big double screen with, uh, with webcam um, and at the other end we'll have trainees joining from their practices literally with a webcam instead of speakers attached to a practice computer. We come together at an appointed time, the trainees just have to click a link, um, they, 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 we come together um, and we have an hour and a half where we have a little bit of teaching, a little bit of didactic teaching uh, on a topic of quality improvement, followed by the trainees sharing uh, their improvement projects and together we uh, use that time to explore uh, what they could do, what different tools they might use uh, and how they might go about taking the next step in their improvement project. So what works well with the Equip programme is that we provide a forum for our trainees to learn on their QI journey together. We provide some one-to-one -one mentorship for them individually to help them to refine their, their, uh, their project. And I suppose a, an important outcome is that it actually results in an improved processes within the practice, so real outcomes for patients. The challenges, uh, as I see them, is that we are embedding this within what is an already busy ST3 training year, so we have to carefully thread it around all those other things. I think we just about uh, uh, do that, uh, hopefully for the, the benefit of the trainees and as they go forward into their jobs as GPs in the future. So the Equip Plus part of the program is an opportunity for one-to-one -one mentorship. And in that interaction, uh, what we do is we uh, get the trainees to tell us about the improvement idea that they have. Sometimes we've got to narrow it down to make sure they're not trying to take on the world. Uh, then what we do is to help them to break it down into individual elements. And to break those down into individual elements, 
uh, we talk, call them the primary drivers and the secondary drivers and from that to generate a list of things, actions we call them, that they could do to result in that improvement. And then they're ready to start to think about the, the PDASA cycles, the plan, do, study and act and implement those actions that they've identified and see what the impact is in achieving the aim of their, their project. So we're trying to teach them to be patient and intentional and not go, I've got a problem, I know the solution, because that's, that learning is what will actually help them to be uh, very effective leaders of change. I got started in QI uh, about two years ago um, and the reason for that was back at that point we were struggling as a practice, we were quite a number of sessions down and we were quite worried about our future as most practices are. And then I went to, a G we didn't know what we were going to do and then I went to GP Trainer Development Day and I heard Nigel Hart and Joanna Bircher talking about quality improvement and I'll be perfectly honest at that point I was quite a QI sceptic. I really didn't feel it had anything to offer me as a GP partner, particularly a GP partner working eight sessions a week in a very busy practice in Northern Ireland. Uh, I thought it would be very time consuming and I thought it would actually generate more work. But I'm glad to say I was completely wrong. And having heard Nigel talk about quality improvement and how it could benefit practices, I started to become really enthusiastic. But then actually it was Joanna Bircher I had what I call my light bulb moment, my eureka moment, when she started talking about quality improvement and its application in general practice and how she had um, taken quality improvement and made such improvements within her practice. So from then, I became probably a QI fanatic. I came back full of enthusiasm and I thought, you know what, this is it. This is the answer for general practice. If we could apply these QI methods, this QI culture, we could go somewhere with this. So I came back full of the enthusiasm as I have and I just said to my practice team, look, I think we should try this. And really it's gone from strength to strength from there over the last two years. We have um, tackled so many things from our systems to improving things for our patients and really trying to hit all of those six quality improvement domains. But for me, it's more all about culture, it's all about ethos, it's about the team and we do this as a team together. I think QI is essential for the next generation of GPs. Programmes like Equip are providing a platform to inspire them that when they have those frustrations in everyday practice, they can actually do something about it. For me, QI is as much about the ethos and the culture as it is about the tools. So that when you see something that frustrates you every day, you actually do something about it. Adopting a QI approach has made such a significant difference to, to our practice. Uh, we, we meet on a regular basis and we process map out our systems within the practice, also um, clinical as well as systems approach, and we process the map as you can see here on the QI wall. And we meet as a team and through meeting as a team we get everyone's perspective. So not just the doctor or the nurse, but actually the people on the ground. And it's by using that approach that we can make significant changes because only do you get hear everyone's voice can you really make a, a change that matters. Because you only you can assume things that are happening, but until you speak to everyone, you don't know what's happening. And only through using a QI approach can we really genuinely get to the bottom of things, process map it out, see where the where the difficulties lie, so we can make our processes more lean and more efficient, more effective and ultimately safer for our patients. I have a frequent opportunity to apply the skills and knowledge gained through the EQUIP programme in my daily work. I am a full-time general practitioner working as a partner in a busy practice and it has provided me with brilliant opportunities to enhance our clinical care for patients through quality improvement projects as well as to help to improve some of our own non-clinical work streams. Quality improvement and the skills that I have gained has also allowed me to educate and improve other colleagues' insight into quality improvement and the benefit that it can have for day-to-day -day working. The QI project which I've chosen to do as part of EQUIP is looking at the time patients wait to get through to us on the phone. We recognise that patients are having to wait a long time and potentially there was other ways their problems could have been managed. We're taking a strong patient-focused approach with the hope that not only can we improve the efficiency of what we do every day, but also that the patient experience can be improved. It's important for me as a trainer that our trainees coming through are equipped with these quality improvement tools because I need for them to be able to understand that change is important and it's important to take a step back and look at the processes that we have to see if there's anything we could do to make things better, more, more efficient, more effective, um, making sure that we deliver the best standard of care that we can for our patients. But it's also about ensuring that when we're doing that, we're doing that as a team and that it's involving everyone. And that it, for me, it's all about QI culture and keep QI ethos. And if our trainees can go away from the, their, their GP training with the culture of knowing, that, knowing what quality improvement means and having an idea of what those tools are and how to apply those tools into practice, then I feel that we really are looking at a bright future ahead. 
Equip is creating a generation of QI early career GPs who are going to take those skills to their practice teams when they start work. It's leading to a dramatic shift in culture and increasing the capacity for QI throughout Northern Ireland with the hope that it will normalise QI as part of our working practices every day. Being a graduate of the Equip programme has given me an excellent opportunity to carry on some good quality improvement work into my future practice. I'm lucky enough to work in lots of different practices and have been able to enthuse other doctors, nurses and other healthcare professionals um, to get involved with quality improvement. I've also had an excellent opportunity to be involved in the QI mentoring um, through NIMTA here to try and enthuse other trainees on their way through the training. Being a QI mentor has been really encouraging um, to hear about lots of different projects and what trainees are doing and how um, with basic tool sets and small amount of experience how trainees can actually um, make big changes in their practices. So it spurred me on to do small changes in the practices that I work in as a sessional GP. So the next steps for the Equip programme are to ensure that we uh, have a sustainability and the, to do that we need to, as we have done already, get more of our previous trainees involved in actually running it because they have become the experts uh, in QI uh, and GP training. Uh, I would like to see more multidisciplinary involvement. Uh, I'd like to see the, the patient voice uh, much uh, more in the centre of it and it would be lovely to have uh, other regions coming on board so we actually have more momentum where it becomes self-sustaining. So time will tell if, if that happens. Well, I'm really glad that you've been interested to watch this video. Uh, what can you do to support what we are endeavouring to do? I suppose as training practices is to support our trainees, to give them the right environment and um, the encouragement um, that will help them to really uh, to hone their skills and to enable them to be, to be great leaders uh, as GPs in the future.